on what the Secret Service knew about the shooter minutes before Donald Trump took the stage. For more, we want to go to Aisha because there was a briefing today. You got some information about what happened, Aisha? Dana, good afternoon to you. We just got a big information dump, and some of it is deeply, deeply troubling. So I'm going to hold your hand and walk you through this. Uh, just bear with me here. A lot of notes uh, that I'm going to look at here. Uh, just about a couple minutes ago, these senators came out of this briefing with Secret Service. They've been asking for it for days now. Finally got it with the director and Secret Service staff. And the top headline that has come out of it, according to Senator John Barrasso, just spoke to him as soon as he hung up on this briefing. He said that a Apparently, the Secret Service had identified as a character of suspicion this man, this shooter, because they saw a rangefinder on him as well as a backpack. And this all happened more than an hour before the shooting actually occurred. So they saw the guy and they identified this guy as suspicious. Now, more details coming from a source familiar here who was also in the meeting tells me that about 10 minutes before former President Trump went onto the stage, they had gone from looking at this guy as suspicious to now looking at him as a threat. That is coming from this briefing that the senators were in. They were told that Secret Service had called it in to a center that this guy they now identified as a threat about 10 minutes before President Trump walked on stage and they still allowed him to walk onto that stage. I'm told the Secret Service agent in charge there was on the phone with local and state police about the threat while the shooting was taking place. That's huge. And that is raising a lot of concerns and now major calls for the director of the Secret Service to step down immediately. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie, and this is some breaking developments on what's happening with the um, the uh, attempted assassination of Donald Trump. But it's unbelievable they knew of him as a threat, identified him specifically as a threat an hour before. We have had different, you know, people doing different reports, and now we're getting solid information, a briefing that the Secret Service was avoiding having. And even um, Biden, who lied and talked about he actually spoke to him, the meaning the man who was in charge of the Secret Service, but we know it is not a man, it is actually a woman. And this is what she's had to say recently. Should that roof have been secure, period? That building in particular has a, a sloped roof uh, at its highest point. Um, and so, you know, there's a safety factor that would be con considered there that we wouldn't want to put somebody up on a sloped roof. Uh, and so, you know, the decision was made to secure the building uh, from inside. Should that roof have been secure? They didn't secure it from the inside. They were eating donuts and drinking coffee and chilling and not caring or Knowing that this was going to happen, they just were told to stand down, stand by, and let it happen. Um, a high-level source reached out to me last night and said to me that the rooftop that the shooter engaged from, as I told you last night during the Tucker Carlson special and then on Don Jr.'s show, was actually supposed to be posted by a local police department or non-secret service counter sniper team. So we're clear on the facts. There were two counter sniper teams from the secret service, two. Those two were assigned to the scene. That rooftop was obviously deemed a threat. It was a line of sight issue. So because they didn't have the assets, and I'll get to why in a few minutes, it involves Dr. Jill Biden, who has an extremely low threat level relative to Donald Trump. This is the breaking news. For some reason, that local police part, uh, this is not about Monday morning quarterbacking, folks. Again, this is not a football game. These are people's lives. For some reason, that local tactical counter sniper team didn't make it to the roof. What I'm hearing from sources is that that tactical team positioned it through a second floor window, which seeds the high ground. Now, I, I wish I wasn't breaking this on my show. The fact that nobody is comfortable talking to the media because they're such insider hacks, and they're afraid they're all going to be exposed and they all have to come to me, candidly, folks, is a travesty. But think about what I just told you. For a second, everybody take a pause and a timeout. Think about the multiple security failures here and the lying. There was supposed to be a tactical CS team on that roof. They didn't make it to the roof. 
They chose a second floor window instead, which seeds the high ground, obviously, and nobody noticed? Nobody noticed that that post, that CS post was unmanned? Nobody had any idea? Now, this explains a lot. The, I, 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 gotta, I gotta control the expletives, I, really. The bullshit you're, I just said that. The bullshit you're hearing coming out of Secret Service headquarters. Now does it make sense? Did you see a few days ago, and by the way, they're watching right now, make no mistake. Did you see a few days ago, I don't know, about three, four days ago, the Secret Service came out with a statement through this PR flack, Guglielmi and others, who, and these guys should all resign immediately. And did you hear what they said? They, they did it kind of in a winky nod, sleazy kind of way, where they tried to pawn this off on the local. The local CS team never made it to the roof, counter sniper team. So when the Secret Service got massive backlash for appearing to pawn this off on the locals, even though what they were saying was true, even though it was the Secret Service's responsibility to check that the post was manned, the Secret Service then dialed the story back and said, oh, we're not trying to blame the locals. This is our responsibility. And then when they got backlash for saying, okay, well, if it's your responsibility, why was there no one on the freaking roof, mother, why was there no one there? What did the Secret Service director say? She came out with this ludicrous absurdity that, you know, I don't know, man, the slope of the roof, uh, we shouldn't be up there. It's like an OSHA violation or something. What, bro? What did you do? But, but, uh, Let me tell you an OSHA violation. There are things in the motorcade and other security mechanisms we use, I'm sure probably aren't safe to be around. You think I sat there and went, "Uh, OSHA, can we get a ticket on this item here? You do your job. You do your job and you keep the president alive. That excuse about the slope of the roof is another lie. Are you getting now what's going on? The Secret Service is lying so much and so often to try to cover up this total Charlie Foxtrot, if you know what that means, you military guys out there. They're lying so much that they're forgetting their lies. And they're not savvy enough, like a Jen Psaki, to lie effectively. There was supposed to be a local post. They never showed up, and no one from the Secret Service checked. They never showed up on that roof. Nobody checked. It also explains the possible hesitation by the other CS teams when this guy was encountered on the roof. Maybe they confused him for someone else thinking it was posted up by locals and it took maybe a couple of seconds to unscrew that. You're not hearing this anywhere else. So as we saw in the new report that has just come out, they know they knew about this threat for an hour and did nothing okay and and we the, these excuses about the roof and all these other things it is absolutely a complete and catastrophic failure but it's not just a failure many believe and i believe it was a coordinated effort you don't have this many coincidences it's not just they're they're, they're of course they're inept of course they're they're clowns but outside of that we know for sure that every person who's an expert in this field is outraged because this is this is nearly impossible to have this happen as an accident. That then the lies that's coming out from Biden in the White House, lies coming out from the Secret Service. So in response to this woman saying that they didn't have anyone up there because the roof was sloped, people are showing even a cow can be on a slope roof. Okay, this is an actual cow living his best life, her best life on top of a ro- on a slope roof. But there's more. Slope Roof, Greenville, South Carolina. Do not attempt this if you are a Secret Service agent. Disgraced Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheeto is now saying they didn't put snipers on the roof where the shooter was because it was sloped and not safe. So then why were there snipers on this roof? The lady keeps digging herself a deeper hole, resign. Absolutely. A security officer on a slope part of the white house roof i paid editorial rights for this picture to make sure everyone knows to to the degree to which this woman is dangerously incompetent or willing to lie to save her behind the malfeasance of cheeto is mind-boggling 
Look at that. So there's a sniper on the roof, on the slope roof of the White House. Kim Cheadle needs to be fired. She should not be given the opportunity to resign. Biden doesn't plan on, it seems to fire her. He likes it as it is. And I think we know why. It's, it's just, it is an outrage that this has happened and that she still has a job at right now. That she's still sitting there with her smug look and her excuses and lies, knowing that there was more to this and that she's trying to pawn the blame onto other people or to, to hide the evidence of really what happened. So guys, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this and I will see you on the next one. Bye.